We've all been there. You're talking with a skeptic, a non-Christian, evolutionist, atheist, and the question comes up about fossils and rock layers and scientific evidence from history and geology, and you realize that you just don't know enough to counter all the pieces of evidence. So what happens? You go off and look for evidence and you come back and you present it to your skeptical friend. And what does he say? I'm just not convinced. I need more evidence. Or no, I actually have a rebuttal to that evidence. You need more. So you go and you look for more and you bring it back. And the cycle repeats ad nauseum. Like I said, we've all been there. I've been there many times myself. And nothing is more frustrating because you know that what the Bible says is true. And yet you get stuck in this endless evidentiary cycle and you never actually get to the real thing you want to talk about, which is the gospel. So you want to get to the gospel, but they want to talk about the supposed conflict between science and what the Bible teaches. So science supposedly disproves a six day creation sometime in the last six to 7,000 years, or science supposedly disproves the cataclysmic flood of Noah. And you want to get to the gospel, but there is this false understanding that science and faith oppose one another. And it's assumed that all the Bible's explanations are arising from this unscientific, ignorant, historical past. And of course, the origin theory that has the seal of approval from the supposed scientific community is Darwinian evolution. It's assumed that there is not and could never be any evidence against the evolutionary model. And if there were going to be a successful challenge to it, it certainly couldn't come from the Bible or from religion. This way of thinking is popular, but it's false. And today we are taking it head on. This is Worldview Legacy, the show that helps Christian men become the worldview leaders their families and churches need. My name is Joel Sedicase. I am a Bible teacher and a former pastor, and now I'm the president and executive director of the Think Institute. I have my BA in history from Grove City College and my MA in philosophy of religion from TEDS, Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. And I used to get caught in these debates over evolution and creation because I found that no matter how much I studied, and I love studying science and scientific apologetics, I never knew enough to argue against every single objection based purely on the evidence. I also found that my debates with skeptics stayed focused on things like rock layers and never got to the gospel. Then, God changed my attitude and my approach. Now, I help believers to share and defend their faith with confidence in a more biblical way and to pass on their faith to the younger generation. So, how do you overcome arguments based on Darwinian evolutionary theory? This is going to help you articulate your faith more confidently in your local area, and it's going to help you lead your kids and wife in answering scientific challenges to Christianity. Today, you're going to hear me debating two believers in evolution. These discussions were from a debate stage event that I did recently on the politics server on Discord. Now, I'm not a geologist. I'm not a scientist. Maybe you're not one either, or maybe you are, but you're going to see that you don't need to be a geologist or a scientist to defend your faith with confidence. Takeaways from this episode are going to include how to respond when someone says that science says the events of the Bible never happened, as well as why the combo of evolution plus atheism together form a defeater for all beliefs, including atheism. How to avoid getting dragged into a debate about rock layers with an evolutionist, and why, when it comes to how we interpret evidence, worldview is everything. If you enjoy robust theological discussions about theology and defending the faith, you need to know about our free community. It's called the Think Squad. This is the group where you can discuss and learn from over 700 others on the same journey that you're on. Every day, we're sharing helpful resources and fascinating topics that will help you to become the worldview leader that your family and your church need. I'll tell you how to get access to that group after the show. We're about to get into part one of the debate. This is where my discussion partner tells me that science supposedly says that the events of the Bible never happened. So what I tried to do 
is to use a version of the evolutionary argument against naturalism, which is an argument that I learned from studying Alvin Plantinga, a brilliant Christian philosopher. And what he says is that if evolution is true and there is no God, then all of our reasoning and mental processes are all evolved for survival, not the seeking of truth. And because of that, we have no reason to actually trust any of our beliefs, including belief in atheism. I was Christian, but my question is, what is your definition of faith? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, faith is trust or belief. Okay. Now, do you actually believe like Noah's Ark and Jonah and the whale? Do you believe those actually happened? Yes. Well, science says they didn't. That's really quite a claim. And so I want to find out where he's coming from. So we're going to talk a little bit about this idea that science says that these things didn't happen before I get into my main argument. When did science say that? Well, if the whole world was flooded, that would be salt water, wouldn't it? Okay. You mean like what the oceans are filled with today? 70% of the Earth's surface is covered with water? Salt water? Like that? Yeah. Okay. So... So you say the whole world was covered with water. Well, I don't, I mean, I I didn't come up with that. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. That's what, that's what history says. Every, every. How do we get fresh water lakes? Uh, Well, the rain falls and fills up. Yeah. fills up lakes, glaciers, carve out lakes. And then, yeah. Is that. I'm struggling. Well, you also say that like evolution we have we and moved on to Noah now? <laughs> I'm sorry. There, have we there's moved on scientific to Noah? evidence of evolution. Uh, you don't want to plant your flag on evolution, man. Uh, evolution is a theory that's it, dead on arrival. Evolution is, is fact. I'm, okay. So let's, go back to, let's go back to Noah real quick. You, you asked about salt water. You know that the world is mostly covered with salt water, correct? Yes. And you know that there are fossils on top of Mount Everest probably, right? Well, Sure. And you know that in order to have fossils of any kind, you have to have extreme pressure and rapid burial, right? Yes. And you probably have heard that every single ancient culture just about has a flood legend. You probably heard that, right? Mm, No. Oh, well, you should look into that. Look up ancient flood legends. Have you ever heard of Gilgamesh? I've heard that. Okay, you should go look up the Epic of Gilgamesh. Careful, though, Mm -hmm. it's a little racy in certain parts. It's the oldest recorded piece of literature and it talks about a global flood and one guy who came through the global flood and the story called his name is Utnapishtim we know him as Noah but yeah the idea that the global flood is somehow unscientific or that science says that it's not there I mean this very respectfully but that's just a false statement science doesn't tell us how about Jonah and the whale well I thought we were talking about Noah I'm making a case for Noah I'm I'm talking Bible stories in general you think they're all true well, so like I just, I just explained to you why I believe in Noah. Do you, do you agree with me that the flood of Noah is actually a lot more reasonable and historically reliable than you initially thought? Have I no. demonstrated that to you? Why no. not? Because I've just made a case for it. Why not? Because everything that I know and all the different species, there ain't no way you can build a boat told that many species. All right. So just you're not aware of how they did it. So you think it couldn't have happened? That- Unless you're thinking like Kent Hovind and think okay. all cows came from just two cows. So it sounds to me like you're not aware of how it could have happened and therefore it didn't happen. And, and there's no way it could have happened. Well, I, I, respectfully, I, you're very uninformed. Do you, about do, you think there's, do you think there's different kinds of animals or different species of animals? Well, define a species. Rottweiler, German Shepherd, Staffordshire. You mean all those dogs that have a common ancestor? Yeah, they do have a common ancestor. Okay. That's, we're on the right track. That's good. Okay. And yeah, that's also part of evolution. Oh, okay. So having a common ancestor. We have a common ancestor with apes. Ah, uh, so you think that we're evolved apes? We are a 
species of primate, yes. Okay. How'd you come to believe that? Because we're sapiens. Well, sapiens means wise. So, because we're wise? Or what do you mean? We are a homo sapiens. There's also a homo erectus. Mm -hmm. So, we there are, are a wise very many types. So, because someone told you that you were an evolved ape, you believe that we are an evolved ape, and therefore Christianity can't be true, and then, therefore what? We are an evolved primate. Okay, so that is your faith commitment. We are I'm in the same to... family as apes. R respectfully, sir, that is a faith commitment that you hold. You've come to Not believe faith, it because... It's fact. It's science fact. Do you believe it? <laughs> Absolutely, I believe it because it's backed with actual evidence. All right, now here's where we get into the evolutionary argument against naturalism. Again, my goal here is to show him that given his disbelief in God and his belief in evolution, he has an undercutting defeater for all his beliefs. And if he has an undercutting defeater for all of his beliefs, then that includes his belief that God is not real and that the Bible is not true. So by trying to pit science against Christianity, and by associating evolution with science, he's actually undermining his disbelief in God. My goal here is not to is not primarily to prove to him that the flood happened. My goal is not primarily to prove to him that Jonah got swallowed by a whale. Those things did happen, but my goal is to lead him to belief in Jesus Christ. So I'm trying to get there. Sometimes you have to dismantle a worldview so that you can show that the Christian worldview is, is accurate. Okay, so you have a belief. If you don't like the word faith, we can use the word belief. You've got this belief commitment that we are evolved apes. So according to your worldview then, why are we even having this discussion? Do apes debate this sort of thing or is there something different between us and apes? Well, do you have any evidence of God? Real quick, I did ask you a question. Why are we having this debate? If we're apes. Because things that you said in other discussions. Okay, no, my, my question is, okay, so Charles Darwin said, with me, the horrid doubt always arises, whether the convictions of man's mind, which has been developed from the mind of the lower animals, are of any value or are at all trustworthy. Would anyone trust in the convictions of a monkey's mind if there are any convictions in such a mind? So that was Charles Darwin. That's the founder of your belief in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in evolution. How would you answer Darwin? Well, you're talking monkeys. A monkey well, is a monkey. Darwin's talking about man as evolved monkeys, as evolved apes. Well, a mind that's been developed from the minds of your own so, so your issue is with Charles Darwin, not with me here. You've got to debate him on this because Charles okay. Darwin d expressed a horrid doubt. He said, the horrid doubt always arises. Would anyone trust in the convictions of a monkey's mind if there are any convictions in such a mind? You've got to, you've got to figure out and you've got to explain to Charles okay. Darwin why there is any categorical or qualitative difference between a monkey and your mind. Now, Do you have any I don't evidence think you need that. of a god? Sir, we're one thing at a time because it seems like every time I make a good point, it, just, it seems like I try, try to squeeze out of it. Just to know real quick, do you have evidence for a God? R real, real quick, because we are talking about Charles Darwin. How would you answer Charles Darwin? See, this is the problem that atheists often have: is that you think that a chicken lays an egg, and it'd be evolution if something else came out of that egg. I am, I am failing to... Do you think it. evolution happens in a snap? No, I, I don't. I, I don't follow... Evolution uh, happens over thousands of years. Okay. Well, Stephen Jay Gould believed in something called punctuated equilibrium, which is a laughable theory, but the reason why he came up with it is he was an evolutionist. The reason why he came up with it is because he realized that there's not enough time according even by the deep time evolutionary time, time scale for evolutionary, oh, okay. uh, the evolutionary process to happen look sir How I, I this think the, is. the theory of evolution as propounded by darwin is a dead theory go look up what How happened old do you think earth actually real quick is? Sir, you're doing it again you're doing it again stick on one topic and I, I, 
I, I like you, but you're, you're dodging hard. You're really trying to dodge, and I'm trying to get some good points in here because I'm I care really about you. I'm really the one look, dodging. Look, I'm, I'm literally not dodging. I'm going very deep on every point, and I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm just telling you that's what I'm doing. So you need to go look up what happened in 2017 at the London Royal Society. What happened to the theory of evolution? You need to go look that up and see what the world's leading evolutionists actually have to say about the theory of evolution. I'm telling you this, sir, it is a dead theory. It is DOA. It is dead on arrival. No leading evolutionist who are, who are still believe in neo Darwinian evolution. About? So, sir, you can continue to try to prop it up until they give you a new paradigm. But I'm telling you, your life's going to be a lot easier if you open up your Bible, read it, see your sin problem, okay. repent, and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything what will you, make sense for you. What do you have that makes the Bible true? All do right, you well, have any evidence on that? Well, look, we can't get into it now, but the very concept of evidence presupposes God, the Christian God, the, the triune God of Scripture. There is what no evidence. Hey, before we move on to part two, I need to ask your help. We have launched the Think Institute as a nonprofit ministry. That means we must raise financial support to cover salaries and ministry expenses. We have a broad group of people who help with this that we call our ministry partners. We're asking listeners of Worldview Legacy to consider joining our team. If you have benefited from this show, please help keep us going. I'm asking you to give your best gift tax-free right now at thethink.institute slash partner. That's thethink.institute slash partner. Thank you so much for your help. Thanks for listening and stay based by God's grace. Now we're about to move into part two. This was with a totally different person who heard my previous conversation and there are some things I would have done differently in this discussion, speaking quite frankly. I realized I'm talking over him a lot in this discussion. This was getting towards the end of the night. I'd been debating for a while. My adrenaline was going, and I would have asked more questions had I done this again. That being said, maybe being a little bit more aggressive in this one was really what the moment called for. I tried to listen to the Lord, so I'll let him be the judge, and you can tell me what you think. This individual is really invested in the Darwinian theory of evolution. And he doesn't come right out with it, but he doesn't believe in God. And he doesn't believe that the biblical narrative is true. And it seems to me he's using that as a scaffold to hold up his atheism. So what I want to do is I want to undercut his belief in evolution, not by arguing evidence. And the reason why is because you argue evidence he's not going to agree with my evidential conclusions. There is tons and tons of evidence out there, scientific evidence, historical evidence, archaeological evidence, paleontological evidence for the truth of Scripture. But that's not my goal because I know he won't accept that evidence. Instead, what I want to do is I want to get to the heart of why does he think evidence is a meaningful concept in the first place. I will not give him the evidence that he is asking for because he's asking for a second level or even third level consideration. I'm trying to get down to first level stuff, epistemological stuff. What makes us think we can know anything at all? And my position is that without God, you can't. His position is it doesn't matter how, let's just argue what we can know. And what I'm saying is, look, if you don't believe in God, the triune God of scripture, of course, you're going to reject any evidence for him. That's your starting point. I'm really interested in the start of this. The evolution is dead on arrival. And mainly also, um, when, when you say these evolutionary biologists aren't doing neo-Darwinian uh, like ideas, are you mainly saying that's because they, they're they more in the modern synthesis? Like they're still, they're still believing life evolved from a common ancestor, right? That's not actually left at all from evolutionary biology. So you're not aware of what happened at the 2017 meeting of the London Royal Society? Oh, uh, no. Could you elucidate me? Oh, uh, yeah. Let me look, let me look it up. Oh, yeah, if you have a link, too, that'd be great. Sure. All right. Just a second. I'm trying to find the actual article. There's a great podcast episode that talks about it, but I'm trying to find you the actual article. Um, while I'm looking that up, do you want to make a point or ask a question? Well, so... I, I, I'm mainly concerned with this idea that evolution is dead on arrival when the scientific oh. community is like that. That's what I'm mainly concerned about here. I mean, I we're talking about evolution. I felt that uh, I could probably present its case a little bit more. 
sure. um, this, is, this is a hobby that, of mine. When we're looking at evolution, there's literally the reason why it's like a theory is because there's literally no evidence that goes against it. All observable evidence directly points to evolution. You can look at the fossil record, you can look at genetics, you can look at biogeography, mm. comparative embryology, the list goes on and on and on. And all of it points to evolution. No, no okay. matter what you do, the rock layer goes back billions of years. So what you're doing is you're reading evidence according to your worldview, just like I read evidence according to my worldview. So how are we to judge? Yeah, but, just to elaborate on what I'm getting at here, I am not aware of any conclusive or good evidence for evolution that is not counter countered and rebutted and refuted by the by a young earth christian uh, creationist interpretation of the exact same evidence so as as confident as you may be in your evolutionary theory and i don't know if you're an atheist or not you haven't said that but in uh, your world it's, irre it's irrelevant uh, to whether evolution right, that's happened, correct right? the question is you could be wrong i could be wrong how are we to judge how are we to judge what's true and uh, so really the question of evolution goes back a layer doesn't it yeah, we can make novel, testable predictions. We can make a ton of predictions about what we'll see in the natural world. We can make, so the uh, interesting thing, okay, the interesting thing about that is you're talking about the scientific method, which was mm -hmm. propounded first by Christians operating out of a Christian worldview. So are you a Christian? Okay, yeah. No, I don't need to. Uh, Mendel, Mendel was a, like in a monastery, dude. I don't need to be a Christian to see that Christians have done work in science, right? Like that, well, the, it, yeah, it's irrelevant. Not work, you know, the like revolution yeah. itself comes from christianity yeah. it comes from yeah. christian it's, it's irrelevant right we're talking about the evidence it's as very it is very relevant since we're talking about science it's incredibly relevant we're talking about the evidence as it is now right and so well, if we're worried about where this stuff came from then it's verging on just genetic fallacy stuff like why do we care yeah, i don't i hear what you're saying and i want to be careful to avoid the genetic fallacy as i think you should as well but the question comes in how are we to judge between worldviews, since you're interpreting the evidence through your worldview and I'm interpreting the evidence through my worldview, I look at rock layers and oftentimes, depending on where they're located, I see a global flood. I look at the fossil record and I see a global flood. It so, all fits perfectly okay. within the, then, the biblical framework. Then, then let's do this. Then, then, I, then let's make an observation. We see a bunch of rock layers mm -hmm. that are they're, they're stratigraphic. They're layered on top of one another. And in these rock layers, we see a variety of fossils. And we also no, see look. polystrate trees. This is a fun one. Go look up polystrate trees sometime. We talk only briefly about this, but it's really fascinating. And I think that polystrate trees are hilarious because here you've got a tree that supposedly grows through millions of years of rock layers. They're so much better explained by a global catastrophic flood than they are by evolutionary deep time cosmology. But go look up polystrate trees, P-O-L-Y-S-T-R-A-T-E trees. Yeah, My, poly, polystrata trees are not a defeat at the stratification. They form in bogs. It's well understood how polystrata trees form. It sure, is yeah, not a defeat. last over billions of years or millions of years. But, it's not a defeat like you think it is, dude. It's well established how listen, that is. Listen, I think, I think polystrate trees are hilarious. I think that they're God's little way of, of uh, debunking evolution. But um, it's, it's literally not a debunk because it's explained. Here we have the first indication that he and I are going to interpret evidence differently. This is just a fact. The reason why he's going to look at rock layers and polystrate trees and interpret them very differently than I am is not because we have different evidence or because he's stupid and I'm smart or I'm an idiot and he's smart. It's because we have different starting points. I'm starting from the presupposition that the Bible is true God is there, and what the Bible says happened, happened. He's starting from the opposite presupposition. So I'm never going to convince him that rock layers prove God. I'm just not going to do it because he's starting from the assumption, the presupposition that God is not there and that the Bible is not real. Now, he might throw a bone to the idea that a God exists and kickstarted things, but not the God of the Bible, not the true God, the triune God of Scripture who's really there. So when you start with that starting point, evidence is always going to be interpreted, well, I would say falsely. And that's what I'm trying to bring out in this conversation. The point is not to argue rock layers. It's one thing to answer rock layer questions in good faith. It's another thing to be dragged into a debate because now you're arguing on his terms. You're granting him an epistemological base that he doesn't have. He doesn't have epistemological warrant or a good reason to think that he can know anything. That's what I want to bring out in this conversation. 
That's fine. Yeah. Again, again, I look at a polystrate tree. I see a tree that was surrounded by sed sedimentary layers. You look at it and you see one that grew in bog and somehow those millions of years of rock layers were uh, somehow deposited there. That's fine. My point is not to argue rock layers with you. That's literally not my point. My point is not to argue um, abiogenesis. I think abiogenesis is a hilarious uh, idea. Abiogenesis is a separate topic from evolution. A god, could have, a god could have magic poofed the first cell, and then it could have evolved from there, right? Right, right, right. So, so, so we're not talking about abiogenesis here. Hear me when I say I'm not talking about that. Hear me when I say So you can tell me we're not talking about it. We agree. So my, my, we're, my we're, I, I want to... You've got a worldview, and I've got a worldview. And what you have to do is you have to propound, you have to posit another worldview that you think is a better alternative to biblical Christianity. We can argue rock layers till we're blue in the face. That's fine. My question yeah, is, how do you know what's true in the first place? What yeah, is I, your I, standard for judging what's true and what even counts as evidence or what even makes evidence a meaningful concept in the first place? That's where we have to get to. Are you willing uh, to go there? I can make novel testable predictions about my reality, dude. At the end of the day, no matter what you do, you are going to see these fossils in this order. Why are these? Why are the fossils in the order that they? You keep trying to. You keep trying to make it about about rock yeah, layers. I, I, and the yeah, that's right the here. point. That's You're the observation. Are, are you asking me how I can trust my own senses? I'm asking you what makes you think the truth and evidence and uh, your truth-seeking faculties are even meaningful concepts to begin with. Because I can make novel testable predictions. I can make predictions about what I will see, and I can see if those predictions will come true. I can have explanatory power. Okay, so it sounds to me like you are assuming, your starting presupposition is that you have truth-seeking faculties that are working, uh, that they are aimed at truth, that they are, you're in a propitious environment. All these things are things that you're assuming. You're bringing them to the table. My question is, where do those things come from, and what is your basis for believing all those things? Where do those faith commitments come from? What faith commitments? All the things that I just enumerated. That, my, that I can just trust my senses enough to, to make observations? Your senses, your reasoning, your intuition, all the conclusions that you're making, the fact that there is even truth to be found at all, what makes you presuppose those things before you even begin your scientific inquiry? Are you asking me if I can come to the objective conclusion of what's happening? No, like I'm, I'm asking you why you think, way. I'm asking you why you think that any of the necessary preconditions for science, in this case, historical science, since we're talking about what happened in the past, are, why do they even obtain? Why do you think, you, that, I'll say it again, your truth-seeking faculties are properly functioning, that they are aimed at truth, and that they are functioning in a propitious environment? In, in other words, in, in a, the kind of environment in which they were designed to function. Why do you think that the preconditions of science, such as uniformity in nature, inductive reasoning, and the invisible, immaterial, universal, absolute laws of mathematics and logic are even there why do you think that evidence is even a meaningful concept why do you think there's even a, an objective truth to get to why like you're presupposing all i don't things. i don't think i can get to my objective truth, why do you right? believe in that? i don't think i don't think anyone can get to objective all right now here's where i'm going to go into Cy ten and kate mode if you don't know Cy, Cy is a friend of mine he's a christian apologist and he would do these debates where he would pound this one point home. The atheist or skeptic would say that he can't get to objective truth or that he could be wrong about everything that he thinks he knows. And Psy would hammer him on that one point, not out of spite, but because that one point is a defeater for all of his subsequent conclusions. And I do a little bit of that in this discussion because I want him to see that he's making truth claims while simultaneously claiming that he can't get to objective truth. Now, this is the necessary contradiction of atheism is that you don't have a way of getting to truth. You don't have a touchstone for truth. And yet at the same time, you need to be able to make truth claims because no one can live in the world without making truth claims. This is God's world. We are God's creatures. So there's this cognitive dissonance of, I can't know truth, but I must know truth. And that's what I'm trying to draw out here. I think we can get a, a good subjective understanding, but I don't is think that true? Can, like, is that objectively true? I don't know. Do you, I don't think I, 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 I think I can make object. I think I can try to make objective statements, but there's no way of knowing if that's going to be true or not. Is that true that there's no way of knowing? I have no idea. Do you know that you have no idea? Sure, I guess. I don't know. Is that true that you don't know? It, it's you a subjective have... statement, dude. There, there's nothing like I'm literally a mind, right? You're making, you're making objective statements about how there is no, you can't know objective truth. 
I, I said I don't know, right? Why are we talking? Uh, because I wanted to talk about the evidence for evolution, and you're um, going in a completely different look, direction. Look, I'm I'm telling you, you just want to ignore the reality around. I don't you. want to ignore. Just listen, substitute your I, own. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. You, you think I'm obf- obfuscating? I think you're avoiding the question. I'm I'm telling you, there are good rebuttals for all the evidence that you think that you have for evolution. Now you're of yeah, course let's, let's go through them. Wait, wait, wait. wait if you wait. agree that there's there, you, if you agree that there's like actual evidence against I'm them, saying, then why are you going against all this 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 all this because, diatribe. You clearly think your senses can arrive at evidence against evolution, but you won't discuss it. And so I do, you, of course, yes. No, then let's course. discuss it. Then why are we talking about this? If you think you can arrive with your senses at evidence that disproves evolution, mm-hmm. why are we talking about this? Because Talk about the evidence that you can observe. The atheist wants me to debate rock layers with him. This is textbook stuff. And this is where I really had to hold my ground and resist that temptation because anyone can look up evidence from icr.org, which is Institute of Creation Research, or Answers in Genesis, or creation.com, I think it is, uh, Creation Ministries International, and you can find a good, solid explanation of not only rock layers, but all kinds of paleontological evidence for the Great Flood, the Great Cataclysm. But I could debate that stuff till I'm blue in the face. And guess what? Even if he agreed with me, wow, I guess you're right. There really was a global flood. Is that going to bring him any closer to the gospel? I don't want him to just agree that there was a flood. I don't want to just score some historical science points. I want to bring him to the cross of Jesus Christ. That was my goal in this discussion. My friend, you've just revealed that you don't think you can, you don't think that Objective truth is even knowable. Do you see how we have a much more fundamental problem? I could prove young earth creation to you till I'm blue in the face. And all you could, you could come back and say, I'm not convinced. I can never know the truth. So do you have evidence or, or not? Yes. There's then let's talk, let, then let's talk about it. And let's talk about it what? right now. Then right now, I would like you to explain the stratigraphic layers. Are you going to the... listen with your, are you going to listen with your ears? Yeah. If you have evidence, I, okay, I'm why do you, willing why to do you trust your ears? You, I don't, I, I, I get the so fact is this, I don't want to talk about this. So you but don't have evidence is what I mean. I, I understand the fact that you don't, oh, I understand. This is, I, listen, sir. Look, I'm my senses could, be, com- my senses could your... be completely wrong and I could still be right. That, that? that is entirely true. My What's senses that? could be wrong and I could be right. A blind man can still grab something, right? Is that true? Supposedly. Supposedly? Is it true? Is it supposedly true? Is it true that it's supposedly true? Oh my God. All these objective truth claims. Listen, you, every time that I challenge you on whether or not something's true, you dodge you that. Think, you literally think there's evidence that show evolution is false. You think that is a true thing. You think that's a true statement. Of You've course, said yeah, this, but you won't course. share it. So if you think there is evidence, then why well, are just, we even just discussing just whether we can trust our senses? You, you literally think your senses can your arrive worldview, at the statement that evolution is evidence false. Evidence is clearly not a think concept. That. Ev- evidence is something that points towards truth. You don't think truth is meaningful. Why would you want to talk about evidence? Now, I already mentioned a piece of evidence to you, polystrate trees. You and I addressed polystrata trees. I addressed right. you, polystrata you rejected trees. It. You've got a I hypothesis. explained how they form. They form in you bonds. Mentioned, you, you mentioned rock layers. I rejected your interpretation of rock layers. Do you see how we could we do this? We didn't even discuss around? rock layers. We didn't even discuss yes, the rock did. layers. Yeah, I said that they were laid down rapidly in the flood. Okay, okay, okay. So then let's go deeper in that. So can you explain no, to me no, why we see, why do we see gradually increasing complexity from the bottom to the top of those rock layers? Okay, does God exist? That's irrelevant to whether evolution happens. 100% relevant. No, because a God could have magic zapped I don't believe that. life into existence. And then Is that what you believe? It's not what I believe, but it's, then, it's a per- it's, it's it's non-contradictory view, either. right? No, no, I don't believe it and you don't believe it. So neither one of us is representing that view. We can put that to bed. We, I'm sure we both have great... Yeah, it's a non sequitur. It's a non sequitur on whether God exists, right? No, no, because if God exists and he does, then he has spoken in his word and he's revealed how things happened. Now, if you don't believe that God exists and can speak, therefore, that we are at an impasse and you're going to have to go back to your non-belief in God or your belief that God doesn't exist. But listen, you want to talk about rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic while your worldview is sinking. You need to the world go is not basics. at all, actually. Does God exist? It, it's irrelevant to whether evolution happened. Is it, it true that it's is. relevant? Is it true that it's irrelevant? Yeah. 
quite literally, a god could have just instantiated all the chemical and oh, physical true. laws. And into no the, one... you, you can try to point to the contradiction in this statement all you want. A god could have instantiated all the chemical and physical laws in the universe in such a way for life to emerge from those properties and diversify afterwards. There's okay. no contradiction in that. Well, you don't believe that. No, I don't. Okay, so and neither but do I. It, I, don't arri- I don't arise to that conclusion because of my understanding of evolution. Right? Here, I don't arrive at my religious beliefs because So I just asked evolution. you if it was true that it was irrelevant, and you said yes. Five minutes ago, you said the truth is unknowable. <sighs> I, I said objective, objective knowledge is unknowable. If you, by truth, you mm-hmm. just mean like the best we can do, then sure, right? The, the best we can do, uh, that's very subjective. I, I, don't, I don't think you can know something. I reject 100%. your arbitrary standard. I reject you as this, the self-proclaimed arbitrary standard of truth. What do you do now? Do you have another standard? Uh, I'm so bored. No. Here's where I pivot to the gospel. Now, when I teach apologetics, I teach it in three steps. One, show the problem with the non-Christian position. Two, show how the Bible solves that problem and doesn't fall prey to the accusation that the skeptic is making. Three, get to the gospel. Show how Jesus solves the ultimate problem. That's what I attempt to do here. It's brief, but I wanted to make sure that I set the scene to talk about what I was really there to talk about. And you might notice that actually changes the conversation a little bit. Listen, you can say you're bored, but the fact is I'm making points that you need to be able to think about. You don't have to answer me. That's fine. But uh, I if, mean, God I, I there, really... if God had spoken, then you are going to have to answer to that God someday. And it, talking about rock layers is not going to do it. You've got to answer for your sin before Almighty God, and that's why God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross. So the question of rock layers is like tertiary. You want to talk about rock layers, I'm not going to accept your conclusions. You're not going to accept my conclusions because we're coming from different starting points. You don't think objective truth is knowable. You don't have an objective basis for trusting your truth-seeking faculties or that they're functioning in a propitious environment and that they're aimed at truth. I do. Why? Because my Bible tells me so. You don't have a Bible. So you don't have that kind of basis. You want to actually, because remember, you said you had literal evidence for this, right? I believe that evidence. You clearly believe you can arrive with these conclusions. I want to know how you arrived at these conclusions. Sir, you don't so, think again, the objective truth is knowable. I'm not going to waste my breath debating evidence which aims at objective truth. Do you, the, the, well, why would I you, do that? If you're not going to waste your time, then why are you even having me up here? I'm trying to show you the fundamental flaw in your worldview in hopes that you'll see your need for Jesus Christ. So you will waste your time. Great. So can you tell me why we see gradual Only change of, uh, the of fossils in the stratigraphic record? Like, wh- why do we see that? Why, why do we see simple organisms and then more complex organisms over time? You really are still pushing this. Is there? Yeah, God because, be because you, you literally said you had evidence. So you clearly think you can uh, arrive at this with your senses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's correct. Well, that's, I, I reject your authority over me and I reject your arbitrary standard of truth. The fact is he probably knows a lot more than I do about rock layers. I would be scouring websites while we talked. But I didn't need to do that because you don't have to be an expert in rock layers to defend the Christian faith. Now, in the show notes, I am going to post links to articles explaining rock layers. How do they actually give evidence for the biblical cataclysm, the flood, as opposed to evolution and deep time? But that was not my point in this discussion. He really wanted me to forget all about worldview, to forget all about epistemology, knowledge, to forget about the truth that I know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He wanted me to put all that aside and to come over into what would supposedly be neutral territory and just talk about rock layers. But in reality, I would be abandoning what the Bible tells me is true, is that men suppress the truth and unrighteousness, Romans 1, and that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge, Proverbs 1.7, Proverbs 9.10. So I couldn't do that. You can't abandon your Christian faith in order to defend your Christian faith. This would have been a completely different conversation if this were a person who was asking questions in good faith and being honest about where he or she were coming from. For example, if this were a Christian asking me, hey, Joel, what do we do about the apparent lack of geological evidence for the flood? That's a very different conversation. This gentleman was attempting to use what he perceived to be evidence for evolution as a way of discrediting the biblical worldview. He's not asking questions 
in good faith to seek truth. He's asking them so that he can rebut them and refute them. What I was doing was I was showing that he didn't actually have a starting point for asking those questions in the first place. Even if he believed in some concept of God, his concept of God would not have been the triune God of scripture. And that is the only God that I'm interested in defending. And so when he says God is irrelevant, he's talking about a God who starts things off like a deist God and then just abandons his creation. Not the true God who is the very ground of logic and truth, the one who makes science possible. That's what I was coming after. So you don't want to share with the class. That's great. I'm under no obligation to share evidence with someone who doesn't believe objective truth is knowable. And that might be frustrating to you. That doesn't change the existence of the evidence. I know about the evidence. You won't accept the evidence anyway, and you don't believe that objective truth is knowable. So yeah, I reject your authority and I reject your fiat declaration that I have to do something. I'm right, but I won't share my reasons. That's correct. That's called being based. That's called being based. It's called running away from the discussion. I'm literally not running away from the discussion. I'm trying to get the, to the, the, the foundation then, come of my worldview. Come on. If you're not willing to go there, I'm sorry. I don't think we have anything else to talk about. Okay. That's fine. I oh, think I've made my point, to be honest. I, I think that you've made your point. I don't think it's the point you were trying to make. But if you really want to look up some of this evidence, go do a search for rock layers on Answers in Genesis or the Biblical Creation Institute. or I would, I would love to talk about them, but you don't want to talk about them. I'm sure you would, but you don't think objective truth is knowable. I think you're doing a serious dodge. Look, man, we've got some fundamental differences. Uh, You're demanding evidence. I'm refusing to give it to you. Go look up. Go look it up. (laughs) I'm not going to do that for you. Okay. You want to answer my question? I'm not going to answer you. Thank you for having me up. Have a great day. From his perspective, here was a Christian refusing to engage with the evidence. From my perspective, here was a skeptic who was refusing to examine the foundations of his own worldview. If he had, he would see that his concept of evidence is firmly planted in midair. It's hung from nothing. Now, we do live in God's world. Evidence is a real thing, but we can acknowledge that as Christians because we recognize that God is behind this world. God is over this world. All things are from him, through him, and to him. Evidence is a real thing. Truth is a real thing. And truth is knowable by us because this is God's world and we are God's creatures. But when you deny God and when you deny our creatureliness, you deny and undercut your own possibility of explaining why you can examine evidence in the first place. And when you start with a godless worldview, no amount of evidence is going to convince you, apart from God's sheer undeserved grace, no amount of evidence is ever going to convince you that God is there because you've ruled him out a priori from the beginning before you even started your scientific inquiry. And he was refusing to think about any of this. He's refusing to look at it. Instead, he was laser focused on the evidence. And from his perspective, he would have said, I'm just refusing to talk about the evidence. There really is no neutrality in this world, my friend. There is no neutral space where we can just leave worldview behind, leave epistemological, metaphysical commitments behind and just say, let's just talk about the facts, the bare brute facts. The reason why is because all facts are interpreted by a mind and they are interpreted according to our worldviews, those assumptions that we take with us everywhere we go. So he was not neutral, neither was I. I wanted to talk about that. He didn't feel like talking about it. He only wanted to talk about rock layers and I refused to get into a discussion with him about rock layers any more than we did at the very beginning. Maybe someday we'll meet again. Maybe we'll talk about rock layers. The conversation might be totally different next time. But this time, I wasn't going to go there because he refused to examine the foundation of his worldview. This was a fun one. And now you know. How should you respond when someone says that science supposedly says the events of the Bible never happened? Push back. Science doesn't say anything. Science is a method of discovery that people use and it relies on biblical principles. If you take God out of the equation, you lose the ability to trust in science as well as any other conviction that you might have. So what I did was I tried to explain in that first part why if God is not there and we are the product of blind evolutionary processes, then we have no reason to trust any of our convictions. And that includes the conviction that God is not there. Of course, as a Christian, I don't believe any of that. I think we can have true convictions. 
I've got tons of true convictions. I've got some false ones, but you can't think that you should be able to know any truth without God. And in part two, we saw how can you avoid getting dragged into a debate about rock layers with an evolutionist? Keep to the basics. Don't pretend to be neutral. Don't pretend to be an expert. Don't let the non-Christian skate past the huge gaping hole in his worldview where a foundation for knowledge ought to be. Without God, he can't know truth. Evidence becomes a meaningless concept, so don't debate it. And when it comes to how we interpret evidence, worldview really is everything. Our goal is not to convince someone about the flood, but to tell the gospel of Jesus Christ. Belief in the flood, all that stuff, that comes later. Now, do you want to grow as the worldview leader that your family and your church need? Join our free community of over 700 others who are getting equipped to explain, share, and defend the Christian message. Join the Think Squad. To get access to the group, all you have to do is to open up Facebook and search for Think Squad, T-H-I-N-K-S-Q-U-A-D. Answer the short membership questions, and that's all that it takes. Thanks for listening to Worldview Legacy. Thank you to Ellipsis and Geo, the moderators of this debate stage event on Discord. This event was produced by yours truly, Joel Sedeckes, and is a production of the Think Institute. We equip believers to explain, share, and defend the Christian message, and we are based by God's grace.